Yeah, welcome back after the break. Uh, just before we went for our break, we started uh, studying chapter three uh, from the book uh, Kingdom Builders, okay, where the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us even as we uh, build God's kingdom, okay. And we were looking at Matthew chapter seven, verses 21 to 23, that, you know, those who do the Father's will will be. Um, reward it okay so we know that it's, our priority should be to do God's will okay and um, when we do that you know his work will go out in power uh, and he will do whatever he has um, uh, called us to do in his name okay um, so we see that the Holy Spirit is our director he is our leader and um, we are so privileged as children of God that the Holy Spirit leads the sons and daughters of God. Okay, Romans 8, 14 says, those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons or daughters of God. So we have the privilege of being led by the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God, what does he do? He basically reveals the heart and the mind or the will or the plan and the purposes that are in the heart and mind of the Father, okay? He reveals it to um, us, okay? So it is important for us to be led by the Spirit. And uh, we, if we read John chapter 14, 15, and verse six, chapter 16, you know, we see uh, Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit will do when he, uh, when the Father sends the Holy Spirit after Jesus goes back to the Father. So what are some of the things that the Holy Spirit will do for us when, uh, when what Jesus mentions in John 14, chapter 15 and chapter 16? If you look at chapter 16, verses 13 to 15, it says, uh, Jesus says, the Holy Spirit will tell you the very things that I have been speaking to you about. Okay. The Father reveals things to the Son. The Son and the, and the Spirit will speak of those things uh, to our hearts okay and we also know the holy spirit reveals things ahead of time why does he reveal things uh, ahead of time so that he can prepare us for those seasons of life prepare us in um, advance how do we know is the holy spirit speaking to us there will be a witness before. okay what is the main uh, key to knowing that the holy that is the holy spirit speaking to us it will align with the word of God, okay? Most important thing, it glorifies Jesus, okay? Um, whatever the Holy Spirit speaks, you know, Jesus will be glorified and magnified. So if you want to know whether you've correctly heard the voice of the Holy Spirit, not the voice, your own voice of your own desire or the voice of the stranger, who's the voice of the stranger? Okay. Satan, okay? It is to know if actually Jesus is exalted or it is he being um, glorified, okay? Now, when we do things that is not in accordance with the plan and the will of God, you know, it is actually birth out of our flesh, okay? And it's not birth out of the spirit. So what is uh, born of the flesh is flesh, Jesus says in John chapter 3 verse 6, what is born of the spirit is of the spirit okay and we cannot convert what is born of the flesh into the things of the spirit okay so uh, sometimes we think you know we do so many things for the kingdom of god and uh, it is out of our own fleshly desires it's not born of the spirit and we think why is god not moving why is he not working okay so what is born of the flesh cannot be converted into the things of the spirit. Now, one example we can look at is in Exodus chapter 20, verses 22, 20, uh, 33. Sorry, Exodus chapter 30, verses 22 to 33. Here, God is telling Moses and he's asking him to pre prepare an anointing oil. Okay. And he's giving him all the materials, how much quantity he needs to take to make this anointing oil. Basically, like a in our context today is like a spray room freshener spray or you know something that uh, hand sanitizer like that a sanitizer 
you know, something like a perfume, okay? So he's telling them, uh, you know, to make this anointing oil and he's giving him all the instructions, what are the material to use, how much to use quantity. And he's saying, you need to take this anointing oil and sprinkle it on everything in the tabernacle, all the utensils, everything in the tabernacle. And whatever is sprinkled with this anointing oil, it becomes what? It becomes sacred. It gets set apart. And he says you should also anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them because they are his ministers and they are his priests. But he's saying that this anointing oil should not be made by anybody else and used for any other purpose. Like, you know, uh, uh, like a body lotion or a body cream, you know, uh, you know, or something that you can use at home as an incense or, you know, to anoint things what you want in your home or in your tent. You can't do that. This is only for the tabernacle. Okay. So this anoint, holy anointing oil in the Old Testament is actually a type and shadow of the anointing of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. Okay. Type and shadow means something that is similar to something that will follow through, okay? So some of the important lessons we learn from this is whatever is used in the service of God must be anointed by God. So if you are serving God, you should be anointed by Him. And whatever is anointed by God becomes consecrated unto God. And, you know, God will not anoint what is born of the flesh. And God will not tolerate any imitation of the anointing he said nobody should make you know this composition with this same material you can't make it for your own self and what is born of the flesh does not have the life the power the authority the presence of the living god okay so basically saying that whatever you uh, do out of your fleshly desires or passion you know, uh, cannot become a true work of God or cannot be an imitation of the work of God. It will actually not even stand in the presence of God. It will not hold on to the anointing power, the presence uh, and the life of God. Okay. Now, um, what is born of the flesh actually hinders the things that is born of the spirit. Look at what Galatians chapter 4 verse 29 says. Uh, Rin, can you please read that? Galatians chapter 4, verse 29. But as he who was born according to the flesh, then persecuted him who was born according to the spirit, even so it is now. Okay, the things that we birth of the flesh will be the very things that hinder Okay, destroy the things that are bought of the spirit. Okay, so it's very important that we know what the enemy is trying to do and birth through our flesh and not do it because that hinders the work of the uh, spirit. Okay, so what are the things of the flesh? What are the uh, fruits of the flesh? We read about this in uh, Galatians, okay, um, chapter 5. Uh, we, we, we see the fruits of the spirit, we see the fruits of the flesh, but we also see that the fruits of the flesh or what is birth of the flesh is always in opposition with the things of the spirit. So there is always a war, you know, things of the flesh and things of the uh, spirit. And whatever is birth of the things of the flesh is not, it, it will oppose the things of the uh, spirit okay and what is birth of the flesh is false it's not true therefore we should be very very careful not to birth things out of the um, flesh okay and what is birth, birth out of the flesh will not benefit anyone will not bring life it will not profit anything to anyone can uh, can you please read john chapter 6 verse 63 john 6 verse 63 it is the spirit who gives life the flesh profits nothing the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Amen. So here we see that what is born of the flesh will not benefit people. It will does not have the power to produce life, godliness, transformation, uh, encounter in people's life. Yes, it will just give an emotional, you know, stirring. People will get emotionally stirred up and feel very excited. But there will be no real genuine 
transformation that happens in life in the lives of people that is why uh, you know in the uh, in the past few years when there was a great mighty move of the holy spirit people being slain in the spirit laughing in the spirit you know um, uh, even though i was not uh, a part of a church where they they used to teach about the holy spirit you know the person the work of the holy spirit i didn't know any person in the work of the holy spirit even the bible college that i studied you know we were not taught about the holy spirit and speaking in tongues and all of those things but uh, uh, there was a church where uh, where i studied in in bible college uh, they were moving mightily in the things of the spirit okay so they were laughing in the spirit and crying in the spirit and um, i used to see people slain and and all of those things but for me at the end of it when i asked these people they said you know whole night they've been laughing in the spirit and their stomach is paining their stomach muscles is paining and they looked very tired for me even though i had not studied about all of these things for me i thought hey if it is actually god's work it should bring that lasting joy you know that that life that kind of uh, uh, freshness and newness of life if the person is feeling tired and exhausted is it really from god so i had in those days when i was in bible college i was so scared about the move of the spirit you know even somebody praying for me for the anointing of the spirit and all that i used to run away you know and this church they said hey you ministered for us to our children during the family camp that they had we're going to pray for you and every time they say that i will go and hide in somebody's room i remember so clearly and then you know the last day they finally caught me just before i was going to take my train to go back to bible college yeah. and they said we're going to pray for you and i was like god i don't want to be slain here i don't want to fall down here i don't want to lie down here i want to go back to bible college so even though they prayed for me i kept my eyes open you know so that i don't uh, and i didn't want anything to do with this because i didn't feel there was this life uh, transformation there should not be any tiredness or fatigue there should the person should say i felt something inside you know my burdens were lifted away or i felt new that is what is about um about the holy spirit the work of the holy um, spirit so what is born of the flesh actually you know will please the emotions will bring about excitement oh everything but afterwards you know people going back to the same old lifestyle so the same old uh, problems and difficulties they can they do not encounter the presence and the power of the holy um, spirit so we need to discern what is of the flesh and what is of the uh, spirit we just can't you know have a feel good you know uh, kind of a mentality when we come into the presence of god it should be something where we encounter god in a powerful in a very very real way okay another thing that we can know whether it's things are born of the flesh or is born of the spirit is what paul says you know he says in first corinthians chapter 3 verses 12 to 12 and 13 that what is uh, of wood hay and straw finally if it does not stand the test you know there will be a test and things of the flesh that is birth out of you know whether it is it will burn up okay so like if you build a building out of wood straw or uh, hay it will easily burn up it, but if it's built a building is built on strong material it will stand the test of time okay so one way we know what is birth out of the flesh it will not stand it will just quickly burn away fizz out it will die off okay but what is born of the spirit is something that is eternal and something that is uh, lasting okay and then you know we also learned that we need to walk in the spirit okay paul key, uh, says you know we need to live in the spirit walk in the spirit uh, and um, what else live walk and sorry live walk and um, be mindful of the things of the uh, spirit okay so galatians chapter 5 verse 16 says walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill or you shall not gratify the desires of the flesh now what does it mean to walk in the spirit to be led by the spirit okay what is to be led by the spirit being sensitive to the holy spirit and being yielded to the holy spirit okay so when we are sensitive to the holy spirit and yielded to the holy spirit we do not birth things of the flesh 
okay and walking by the spirit is not something that we do once in a lifetime it's a day by day moment by moment minute by moment minute choice that we make to be under the influence authority and the power of the holy spirit rather than you know under the influence and the power of the dictates of the flesh okay so sometimes the voice of our flesh will cry out will demand will want things but at those moments we need to draw strength from the spirit we need to shut down crucify that voice or shut it down okay the voice of the flesh and we need to make a choice to um, you know follow the spirit of god or what the holy spirit is telling us okay and we need to as kingdom builders even as the holy spirit is our director we need to walk yielded and in brokenness okay so sometimes you know uh, some of us are very uh, confident about ourselves because we are very co uh, competent we are very skilled we are very intelligent you know uh, and most likely when we you know feel we are more capable competent and all of those things you know it's very easy for us to um, birth things out of the flesh and not be dependent on the holy spirit okay so i am in this point walking yielded and in brokenness so if you can follow in your books it will be nice okay so that you're not uh, dreaming away uh, so it's important for us to remain in a state of yieldedness and brokenness. So yieldedness is a choice that we make where we choose to listen and submit to the Holy Spirit. Brokenness is also a choice. Brokenness basically means where we are completely dependent on the Lord. You know, we're saying, God, I'm nothing. You know, it's all about me the thing we are uh, brokenness means we just consider ourselves to be those earthen vessels which can break very very easily and we are nothing actually but it's only the anointing of god that flows upon us that makes us as worthy vessels okay as makes us as vessels of honor even though we are those earthen vessels okay and we need to uh, stay in this place of dependence on God, where we are receiving from his power and his anointing and just depending on him totally and wholly and uh, uh, solely on him. So every time we choose to minister, we need to come to this place of yieldedness and brokenness. Okay. Now, uh, the two questions that we uh, ask is what motivates me and who is glorified? So how do we know that we are birthing things of the flesh we need to ask who's what is motivating me and then i'm doing this to get more fame name um you know popularity or to be well known or my church to become famous you know am i doing it for that what is motivating me and who is being glorified is my name being glorified uh is uh you know the senior pastor thing, oh he or she has done so many things so you know very powerful very anointed what is who is being glorified okay so what is motivating you whether you're motivated out of selfish ambition you know the lust of the flesh uh, or the fruit of the flesh whether it's hatred jealousy anger selfish ambition you know competition with other men and women of god you know envy whatever it's going to produce things of the flesh it can't produce things of the spirit so if you're asking and saying hey this church is doing so many um ministries but we don't see anyone really god being glorified or the glory of god falling no signs miracles and wonders it's important to ask what is motivating what they are doing and another simple test is who be, who is being glorified okay whether it's christ being glorified or the pastor or the men or women or the church being glorified so these are two questions that is important for us each time we do something each time we are planning something it's important for us to ask this question what is motivating us to do this program and who is being glorified okay and the other thing we learn about the holy spirit is the holy spirit also reveals to us where we need to do things when we need to do things and how we need to do things okay where so we see, you know, if you read scripture, the Holy Spirit has um, guided people to go to different places to do 
ministry. For example, you know, the Holy Spirit told Philip, go near and, uh, and overtake this chariot in which the Ethiopian eunuch was there. And so we see that he just obeys, goes, and we see that the Ethiopian eunuch, he understands the gospel, he's baptized, and he takes um, the gospel to Ethiopia. Okay, Acts chapter 10, verses 19 and 20, we see that Paul in a vision, you know, where he sees that uh, cloth and, you know, many clean and unclean animals. And God, the Spirit of God tells him three people are waiting. Go with them. Do not doubt. Do not ask any questions. And so whose house was he led? To the Gentiles' house, Cornelius's house. And uh, Peter, being a Jew, never thought the Gentiles would also be part of the kingdom of God. They would also receive the gospel, and also be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Even before he finished speaking the message, what happened? People were baptized. Okay, They were cut in their heart, it says, and they started speaking in tongues. And then he realized the vision that he had and that God also has, you know, um, uh, has the plans for uh, the, the Gentiles. Okay, So here we see that you know, uh, the Holy Spirit instructs us when, where, sorry, where to go uh, and what to do. Okay, the next thing is um, wh when we need to go there. Okay, so we see that, um, um, you know, in Acts chapter 6, um, was um, uh, Acts chapter 16, verses 6 and 10. 6 to 10, sorry. You know, we see that Paul, you know, he goes to certain places and he had come to Mysia and then he tried to go to Bithynia. But when he goes to Bithynia, what happens? The Spirit of God does not allow him to go to Bithynia. But the Spirit of God tells, uh, he, he uh, in a vision, Paul sees an, um, uh, you know, a man of Macedonia coming and pleading with him and telling him, please come to Macedonia. Okay, so uh, this vision confirms that Paul has to go to Macedonia, but he was actually trying to go to which place? Bithynia. Okay, so here we see that, you know, um, the Holy Spirit is not only telling us, you know, um, where to go, but also when to go. Okay, so he's telling the Holy Spirit, is telling him it's not a time now to go to Bithynia, but you need to go to Macedonia. And so we see that, you know, Paul uh, goes to Macedonia, he preaches the gospel there, and the uh, people are led to the Lord. Okay. And we read this in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 15 to 17, where Paul says, you know, um, can somebody read that, please? 2 Corinthians 1, 15 to 17. 2 Corinthians 1. 15 to 17 and in this confidence i intended to come to you before that you might have a second benefit to pass my way of you to macedonia to come again from macedonia to you and we helped by you on my way to judah judea therefore when i was planning this did i do it lightly or the things i plan do i plan according to the place that with me there should be yes, yes, and no, no. So here we see that the Holy Spirit knows exactly when, where, and how we must go about doing the work of the kingdom. So here Paul is saying, you know, um, when I was planning all of these things, was I taking it very lightly? Was I, was do was I doing it out of my flesh? Uh, but he says, no, for me, a yes is a yes and no is a no, okay, it's from God, God who leads. So he say it's the Holy Spirit who inspires him, leads him, helps him plan. And he says these are the very things that he does. So we also need to, we have our own plans, our agendas. We need to submit that to the Lord. Say, God, this is what I plan and I purpose, what I think, you know, you're welcome to change it. You're welcome to move things. You're welcome to realign things, rechange things. And I'm just willing to submit and yield to your leading and your direction. 
Okay, so the work of the Holy Spirit, or what is birth of the Holy Spirit, cannot be done with just, you know, or the work of the kingdom cannot be just done with human understanding. It requires spirit guidance, the Holy Spirit guidance, and kingdom thinking. That means a mind that is renewed with the word of God, where we're thinking in terms of God's ways and God's thoughts. Okay, and we know that the Holy Spirit prompts us in different, several different ways. And uh, we studied all of this in um, fulfilling God's purpose. Sorry, when we were doing receiving God's guidance for your life in the first year. So, you know, you learned the Holy Spirit can uh, speak to us through a quickening in a certain word, inner witness, impression, you know, uh, just put a, a rhema word, a flash of information in your spirit. You just know inside, you know, you sense the peace of God where the Holy Spirit is saying, go ahead. You speak, you feel tightness or restlessness, which means the Holy Spirit is saying, don't do it. You know, you can also get um, uh, through prophecies, dreams, visions, and also through ideas and pictures. So various ways the Holy Spirit uh, communicates to us. All of this we studied in detail when we were studying receiving God's uh, guidance uh, for our lives, okay, from that uh, publication, Receiving God's Guidance, okay. So even as the Holy Spirit is our director and leader, it's important for us, you know, to uh, be mindful and sensitive to the Holy Spirit. How can we be mindful and sensitive to the Holy Spirit? How can we be mindful to the and sensitive to the Holy Spirit? Very simple. Huh? Be obedient. Seeking God continuously. Okay. Basically, have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Right? You know, communion with the Holy Spirit, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We have communion and fellowship with the Father and the Son and not the Holy Spirit. Spirit. And that's why we say the Holy Spirit doesn't speak to us. It's because we are not tuned or trained to listen to the Holy Spirit. So we have to maintain an undisturbed communication with the Holy Spirit throughout the day because the Holy Spirit is constantly reminding us and telling us and speaking to us, uh, you know, at various points of the uh, day. So we need to constantly be tuned to the Holy Spirit, right? Okay. And listen to Him. Okay. Uh, apart from just setting regular time and prayer and meditation, it's also important for us to constantly be engaged in tuning and listening to the Holy Spirit. And also when we are uh, meditating on God's word, it renews our minds and it realigns ourselves to God. Because the Holy Spirit speaks to our spirit man and our minds is the processor. The mind is where things are. Processed. So if our mind is not renewed, then we can say, hey, this is not the Holy Spirit. It's not doable. It can't happen. You know, so mind is also very, very important. And sometimes in spiritual aspects, we leave all out our mind. We think God does not use our mind. Okay. But it is important for us to also renew our mind. And how do we do that through prayer and meditation? Okay. Another thing how we can be sensitive to the Holy Spirit is, you know, being calm on the inside okay because the holy spirit is very very uh, you know like very peaceful calm that is why the holy spirit came as a dove okay so we need to be very calm and peaceful and you know where if a dove is sitting on your shoulder how will you what will you do you won't walk like this right or you will not jump or you will not move your shoulders you know, you will very gently and very, very cautiously move without disturbing the dove. The same way it's important for us to maintain inner peace, inner calmness, so that we can listen to the Holy Spirit. Okay? Um, um, like Romans chapter 16, verse 20 says, walking in, in peace, you know, um, is walking in him who is God of peace, who crushes the enemy under our feet okay and also we need to maintain a heart of purity a heart uh, and life with right motives okay um it's important for us to do that okay we need to be set apart for ourselves as godly consecrated sanctified um, for the master's use so that this anointing can flow through our lives 
okay and also we have to walk in love okay uh, even as we you know when paul is talking about the gifts of the holy spirit he says but walk in love because that is more important if you're not walking in love we cannot exercise the gifts of the holy spirit okay so uh, god is love he who abides in love abides in god and god in him 1 john chapter 4 verse 16 okay if we don't walk in love we cannot walk in the spirit okay we cannot walk in him or walk in the spirit if you're not walking in love okay and also it's important for us to discern the spirit's timing okay there is a time for every season every action in under heaven ecclesiastes okay sometimes the holy spirit will tell us to go and do things and we need to go and do things like philip um, uh, the holy spirit told philip in acts 8 29 go near and overtake the chariot okay so that time it was immediate obedience instantly he had to go without questioning there are other times you know, when the Holy Spirit speaks, we need to take time to pray, to prepare, and then act on the instruction. So every time the Holy Spirit is teaching us and guiding us uh, and preparing us, uh, telling us something, it is also sometimes it can be to prepare us for the future, for the next season of our life. Okay, so we need to um, know when to act immediately, when we need to take time to pray and prepare, and then act when the kairos moment comes or the god appointed time comes okay now um praying in the spirit yes uh, can you tell uh, some practical tips how to maintain the communion with the holy spirit how to maintain commu uh, communion with the holy spirit okay so basically like um, like now you're going for uh, you're in this class okay you're listening to the lecture and you're saying, God, Holy Spirit, even as I'm listening to the lecture, what is, there's so many areas that we have heard. Where are the areas in my life where you want me to work? Or uh, we learned, we were talking so much about, you know, God being glorified. So you're saying, Holy Spirit, am I glorifying you 100%? Or, you know, am I uh, seeking glory for myself? And if I am, so you're constantly speaking and engaging. Now you're talking about uh, after classes, going for a supernatural hour. What are the songs I need to choose for the ministry? So, you know, for the supernatural hour, God, uh, Holy Spirit, you know, give me the, uh, the songs. Or, uh, you know, I have to speak to this person after, the, uh, after class or I have to call this person. So, Holy Spirit, you know, uh, speak through me. Give me words of wisdom or knowledge or understanding. So, or you're, you, you meditated something in the morning, saying, Holy Spirit, I didn't understand that. What are you doing? How can I apply what I have learned in my quiet time how can i apply that oh holy spirit i'm feeling so down and so discouraged or i am um, you know um, uh, you know not feeling too great uh, you know reveal to me what is really happening why am i feeling like this so you're constantly engaging and speaking to the holy spirit and in communion with the holy spirit hmm. so one time like uh, i hear on uh, preaching from benny Hinn, uh, he used to talk with the Holy Spirit, like, good morning, Holy Spirit. Uh, so it's kind of relationship. How to maintain that, man? Like, we can create a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Yes. How to maintain that? Yes, uh, not only Benny Hinn, but uh, even that uh, Paul Yonggi Cho, uh, he, he's, once he came to a point of total depression and he was sitting there and he was saying, God, you said I'm going to have a church of 5,000 and I'm not even having few members and those members who are coming now are also leaving what is happening. Then God revealed to him that he is not really, uh, you know, um, uh, walking, I mean, not communing with the Holy Spirit and leaving out the third person of the Trinity. And then he realized that you know, he needs to commune into the, with the Holy Spirit. So, he, you know, when he wakes up in the Holy Spirit, he's telling Holy Spirit, good morning. Uh, so what do you have for me today? What are the exciting things you have for me today? And he says, you know, when he goes up to the, walking towards the pulpit to preach, he's saying, Holy Spirit, you come with me. Holy Spirit, you speak through me. Holy Spirit, you minister to me. Let your power. So uh, like that. So even now, if you're asking me this question, I'm telling, asking the Holy Spirit, how should I answer Francis? Even as I'm, you know, I'm I'm thinking about an answer. You know, how can I answer? 
So sometimes we don't have to say, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to say? You know, you can just say, uh, you know, Holy Spirit, what should I say? Or what should I say? just say? I don't know. Why am I feeling like this? So you can talk. Holy Spirit, why am I feeling like this? He's a person. You know, that is why God uh, 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 relates to us as as a person because we can we relate to each one of us as person so he identifies us uh, with a per, as a person and so so that is so beautiful so you can talk to him as a friend like as a you know as a person nothing wrong to say good morning holy spirit good night holy spirit mm -hmm. even as i'm speaking as sleeping holy spirit consecrate my mind so that i get dreams and visions if you want to speak to me through uh, dreams and visions you know speak to me in the night i'm very excited to hear receive dreams and visions from you just speak to him yes um, uh, you don't like we have uh, communion with god the father and uh, jesus but we don't have the relationship with Holy Spirit, like how, uh, how is the difference like having relationship with Jesus but not having the Holy Spirit? Can you explain more like how can it be? Because like they are uh, Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, they are all three in one. So even if we are having relationship with God, is it not like having relationship with Holy Spirit? Yes, it is. When you have relationship with God, you have relationship with the Holy Spirit and with the Son. But there are three distinct personalities. Even though there's one God, there are three distinct personalities because of the three distinct roles that they have. The Father is the supreme authority. He is the one who speaks. The Son listens. The Son speaks. The Holy Spirit uh, you know, testifies what the Son has spoken. We read in John chapter 16. Okay. So the Holy Spirit's role is what? Comforter, teacher, guide, uh, the one who comes alongside us, the one who enables us, he, he counsels us, he helps us pray in our weaknesses. So we need to identify the role of the Holy Spirit as well. So you're saying, Holy Spirit, I don't know what to pray for this person. Give me the words to pray. But you are going to pray in the name of the Father, and you're going to thank uh, in the name of uh, Jesus, and you're declaring the finished work of the cross. But who is the one who is helping you to pray? The Holy Spirit. It's not that if you don't say Holy Spirit, and Son, the Holy Spirit is going to get angry, He's not going to help you. Because you told only Father, only you said, told Son, you and ignore the Holy Spirit. No, it's not like that. But it's important for us to acknowledge each of these distinct personalities with their distinct roles that they um, have and like uh, as uh, you have to remember like uh, we can uh, speak to holy spirit like have conversations mm. speak what we are going through we can mm. speak normally but also from the other side speaking is a one part but hearing is the other aspect of it how we can be sure of it's the holy spirit that speaking to us how, is, how can you be sure? That's how can we differentiate? Is it by our own? Is it from Holy Spirit or is it? Yeah, we learned that way? in um, when ministers foundation. First of all, we need to see whether it is alongside God's word. Secondly, whether God has been speaking about this in various instances in your life. Okay. If you hear something new, wait for confirmation. Look at God's word. Ask for confirmation. Also, whether it is glorifying Jesus Christ. So, uh, did you listen to FM this morning? Huh. Did you listen to FM this morning? No. Why? You never listen to FM, right? So, how do you know the Holy Spirit is speaking to you when you never listen to the Holy Spirit? When you're tuned to listening to the Holy Spirit, you will know it's the Holy Spirit speaking then you will be able to discern whether there's a holy spirit speaking your own desire speaking or satan speaking and sometimes the, you will come to know with such deep clarity because you are accustomed and tuned to listen to the holy spirit now if i bring in all the faculty here and one by one we blindfold you and ask them to speak you will say who is pastor jakes who is pastor nancy who is pastor paul because you identify their voice the same way when you're, you're used to listening to the Holy Spirit, you come, you're constantly tuned and you will discern very clearly. And also important to discern is you need to have a renewed mind. A renewed mind helps you to discern. What is a renewed mind? When you're taking on the ways and the thoughts of God. Okay. 
so that is a renewed mind and your mind is renewed daily by god's word god's word is that's why god says i will write my words on your heart and mind and i put my spirit my spirit will teach you all things so renewed mind is very very important for us also to discern whether it's the spirit uh, speaking and we have to grow into all spiritual wisdom and understanding pray that god help me to grow in all spiritual wisdom and understanding what paul writes in ephesians and colossians then you will be able to discern okay so we need to any other questions okay um we need to pray uh, in the spirit praying the spirit helps us to understand the purposes of god okay uh, first corinthians chapter 2 verses 9 10 16 very famous verses okay no man has seen no ear has heard no heart perceived the things that god has prepared for those who love him but who reveals it to us the holy spirit the holy spirit is able to reveal to us because he knows the deep things of god okay Uh, for who has known the mind of the lord that he might instruct him but we have the mind of christ why do we have the mind of christ or when do we have the mind of christ when we are able to receive things from the holy spirit because the holy spirit reveals the mind of god to us and so the holy spirit reveals the mysteries of god to us it reveals the thoughts the plans and the purposes that god has for us the holy spirit reveals it to um, us okay so when we pray we know you know praying in tongues we are praying mysteries but it's not mystery to god is the holy spirit revealing things to us and we are praying in accordance with god's will plan and purpose for our lives okay and when we pray in the spirit we also learned i'm just moving past because we've already learned this in uh, you know uh, holy spirit class and also ministers foundation when we pray in the spirit we are actually aligning our will to god's will okay we are coming under the sub subject sub submission subjection and the yielding of the holy spirit okay so hebrews chapter 5 was 7 and 9 says now though he was a son was he learned obedience by the things that he suffered okay and having been perfected he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him okay so we say we see that you know jesus himself learned obedience by the things he suffered okay how did jesus learn obedience he aligned himself to the father's will okay how do we know he aligned himself to the father's will on the cross okay even yes father says and i i um i i obey i do the father's have come to do the father's will okay one instance is in the garden of gethsemane you know he just prays father take this cup remove this cup but finally he says not my will but your will be done okay so when we pray you know and pray in the spirit our will becomes aligned to god's will so even jesus when he was praying his will finally became aligned to god's will okay so in times of prayer you know god works in our hearts he brings our wills our desires our dreams in alignment with his plans and purposes okay and the very famous verse in romans chapter 8 verses 26 and 27 it says you know um uh, the holy spirit intercedes for us with groanings which cannot be uttered that means the holy spirit along with us prays for things that we do not know what to pray for okay um so when we pray in tongues we pray um by the spirit and um, and we it's a prayer that is coming from the very throne of god from the very heart of god and we are praying in accordance with god's will okay and it's also praying in the spirit uh, brings us to a place where we are aligning our will to become his will okay now very interesting um, uh, you know um, content that is given here giving birth to the work of the spirit some lessons from the mary miracle this is a sermon that pastor preach is a very uh, you know powerful truths that um, you know we see here and uh, we look at the work of the holy spirit looking at um, you know how um, um, uh, the holy spirit uh, uh, you know uh, through the power of the holy spirit mary conceived you know 
um, through the power of the Holy Spirit, Mary conceived Jesus in her womb. And uh, looking at the whole, uh, the birth of Jesus, and we look at um, some lessons about the work of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So we see that, you know, um, uh, the work of the Holy Spirit is released into this earth at the appointed um, time. Okay. Um, uh, we know that, you know, um, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, God already says there that I will put enmity between you and the woman and your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. That means on the cross, God is already declaring that, you know, uh, uh, that Jesus will, you know, defeat Satan. Okay. Uh, the head crushes head, crushes authority and power. He will be rendered null, nullified, powerless, and with stripped of all his powers. That is on the cross. But it took 4,000 years for God to accomplish this. That means God waited for the Kairos moment, the fullness of time, when he was going to release what he has already uh, promised, what he has already um, spoken. So, you know, the Holy Spirit speaks to us things ahead of time, so that we can be prepared for the seasons to come. And at the right time, you know, God, the Holy Spirit or God will release what he has promised uh, in the Kairos moments in our lives. Okay. And also we see that the work of the Holy Spirit is released through ordinary people. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 says, A virgin shall conceive and bear a son and you shall call his name. Emmanuel. So we see that God could have chosen some uh, prince, a princess, or some highly educated woman uh, to give birth to baby Jesus. Okay. But here he chooses a very insignificant, inexperienced virgin like Mary. Okay. So just imagine, you know, somebody like Mary who's never given birth to a child and this is the first time she's conceiving that due to the power of the Holy Spirit you know what if there was she was reckless or careless and you know she had a miscarriage what if she didn't take care of herself during her uh, pregnancy you know there were huge risks that were involved but you know uh, from God's perspective you know um, God when he births something the outcome is dependent on him okay all that mary had to do was just to be obedient to be available and once she was obedient and available and put her faith and trust it was god who enabled her and strengthened her and um, helped her out okay so here we see that you know um, god is not afraid to entrust big kingdom responsibilities or even you know, what he wants to do, how he wants us to build his kingdom to ordinary people. Even though his kingdom is eternal, his kingdom is powerful, okay, he's not afraid to entrust it to ordinary people like you and me to do his work um, uh, or his uh, to build his eternal kingdom, okay? The next thing we can learn is the work of the Holy Spirit must be unadulterated, born purely of his spirit, okay? So we already saw this, what is born of the flesh, you know, uh, cannot be converted to the things of the spirit. It does not have the life, the power, the anointing, okay? So um, we must uh, say no to the things of the flesh and yes to the things of the spirit. And that is what the angel tells um, um, uh, Mary, that what is born of you, you know, the, or the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the high, uh, highest will overshadow you. Um, and what is born of you will be called the son of God. So the whole, the angel is telling Mary that, hey, this is through the power of the Holy Spirit. Or it's God who is going to birth this in you. It's the work of God. Okay. Also, we see that the work of the Holy Spirit might, you know, bring uh, embarrassment to us. Okay, I'll stop here because we just have one more minute. I'll not move into the next point. Okay, some very interesting things that we can learn from the Mary miracle. We'll continue next class. Anyone has any questions, any doubts? Before we just have one more minute. Any questions, any doubts? 
good to read through this Mary miracles. Very interesting. Very uh, good, profound thoughts that are there. You know, Pastor preached this uh, sermon once, many years back for a Christmas thing. Mm. Yeah, and I think it just came spontaneously also, I think. I don't know. Yeah, so powerful. Yeah, even he was just revealed by the Holy Spirit, I think, when he was preaching. So this is one of the one of times when he was doing this. So very powerful. Any questions, anyone? Okay, there are no questions. We'll end class. So be a kingdom builder and follow what we've learned um, so far uh, about uh, being kingdom builders. Okay, and pray that, you know, you will be a kingdom builder uh, who is glorifying God and pure in your heart and in your motives so there will be no unrighteousness in you. Okay, thank you everyone for joining class. Uh, have a blessed day and a blessed week ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Remy.